All right, guys, Jack Linton here. We're going out on Truman today to do some crappie fishing. Uh, I brought along my co-pilot and co-angler, Holly, my wife. She's a talent in the boat. All I do is drive. I always say that. So um, Truman, everybody knows, is a very dangerous lake when it's at a normal pool, which is 706. Right now it's at 704.24. Um, we've been out all this week making safe lines for travel so that we'll, we'll be okay when we go fishing. We know that we won't run on a sandbar, hit a point or a stump. Um, on the Hummerbird map here, you can see the contour lines that show you your depths, where you got the safe run in the river channel, and then you got more contour lines out here. As you get closer to the bank, you can see the blue. So the blue lines are where it starts to go to 12, uh, 10, 8 feet. It, it makes the lake a lot uh, more easy to comprehend while you're driving. When I'm running, I keep one map zoomed in so I can watch what I'm doing. I can see the contour lines and then I keep my other map zoomed out so I can see what's coming on the lake as far as uh, a, a sharp bend or a change in the river channel so it's not immediate when I come upon it. We're going up the Grand Arm today, um, and you can see on the mapping some waypoints and stuff that we've marked. We've, we're going to be fishing some flats and some trees today. So We're going to use our uh, Hummerbird electronics here to get where we're going, so let's get fishing. All right. All right, guys, we got to our, our spot where we want to start the morning. Um, we got our Mega Live on, got our Apex fired up. We're looking at what's going on. A lot of times on Truman, fish will hang in tree rows. Um, it, right now, with the water being two foot low, it looks like just a bunch of trees. So if you can find where it looks like a tree row, where they're kind of all in one line, a lot of times you'll find fish there. Uh, because they, they like to stay in a line of trees. It's kind of hard to see sometimes when you're looking at so many stumps, but um, you can use your mapping um, and see those on the map, and that's, that can be really helpful too. So we got a couple fish in between those two trees right there that you can see. That's the two trees. You can see the fish hanging right there because they light up a little more. Fish in between two trees like that are tricky because you've got to get just the right angle to get your bait in there. You've got to get just the right angle with your live to be able to see them. I'm moving to the other side of the tree to see if I can get a better picture of that fish. A lot of times you can tell that they're crappie because they look kind of like footballs. Um, and crappie, when they see a bait, a lot of times you'll see it kind of angle upward at the bait, and that's how you can tell it's a crappie a lot of times. The top one's definitely right. And the bottom one looks Bottom's, like it's darting around. He's kind of acting right, though. <laughs> Truman's known to be a single pole lake. It's always been a single pole lake, even before the Mega Live uh, was around, because there's so much vertical structure. With standing timber, you're putting your bait on the fish. You don't have to dig through the whole pile or hope that the fish comes out because you can see it. You know, you, it, it's just, it's a little easier for a beginner to fish standing timber than it is uh, brush piles. Bam. Mm. Oh. I'm not sure that's what we needed. You don't think so? I think don't it's... know. It didn't feel like a normal bite. Yeah, sure oh, was. All right. You can put that on there that she missed that and I caught it if you want. I left it for you. <laughs> yeah, I left true. it for you. She was checking just to make sure it was awake. Yeah. Ready to eat. Uh -huh. So we primarily use plastic baits um, and we try to use versatile baits that'll work in cloudy water, muddy water, and clear water too. So these are some of our favorites. Um, this here 
it's called the Little Freaky Worm, and it's made by Freaky Frank's Custom Tackle. Um, it's 1.75 inches long. Um, it's made to do all the action for you, so you don't have to move it around. The tail does all the action for you. So I have it rigged up here on a 16th ounce jig head. It'll go on any size hook. It, it, it looks tiny, but it'll go on any size hook. So that's our go-to. Um, that's what we start with all the time. Um, but what we figured out is sometimes if you want an aggressive bite, a reaction bite. Um, sometimes they seem to feel intimidated, I think, um, by putting a bigger bait down there. So we sometimes will use this XL worm. Um, it's quite a bit bigger, and I have it also on a 16th ounce uh, jig head. So um, we did catch some fish today on minnows, which is great for summertime. Um, and when we use a minnow, we just tie it up with a straight minnow. So it's a weight um, and then a minnow hook, which we usually use like a number four minnow hook underneath. And then that's how we catch them on minnows. This time of year, everything's pretty tight. When the sun comes out, it, it makes them all go to the structure. They, they suck up to the trees. They try to get a little shade. You want to make sure that you keep the bait above the fish. Um, if the fish sees it, if it's a crappie, you can notice that it kind of tilts its nose upward. Um, and you'll want to keep it super still at that point. You don't want to move it around. Um, but if you can't get a good look at the crappie, you'll want to kind of change your position on the structure, go to a different side, um, and kind of look at it from that angle. Okay, so there's one hanging on this tree here. You can see the jig go down. He's not really acting like he wants the jig at all. So, hey babe, yep. would you get me the, the minnow pole, the straight minnow pole? So while she's getting that, I try to keep my eye on the fish. So that if it swims or changes trees, I know where it went. So, it gives it a little more natural uh, look and a reaction. The fish is used to seeing that. Um, and when they're finicky, that's kind of what they want. Okay, didn't want it from that direction. So I'm gonna drop it on this side now and let it swing over the top. So a lot of times when they're hanging on a tree like that, you can see the bait approach the fish better from that side. Oh, sure. Uh, yep. think they're really liking this minnow too much which is kind of crazy because it seems like they always want a minnow um, it's just more natural for them but I think babe do you want to try the freaky worm sure the the mean green yeah I think you have it on your pole right yeah are you ready I do I am okay all right Yeah, you gotta you gotta figure out what they want. I mean, some fish want uh, the the more worm looking bait, and then sometimes they want that minnow. But I mean, you might as well try it all. So a lot of times, if I'm fishing a fish on a tree, and I can't throw to the backside because the tree's blocking my jig, I'll bring the bait up from the front side of the tree so I can see the bait float over the fish. So I know that that fish is seeing that bait. There he goes up under it. And he's looking at it. There it is. I just had to get it in front of it. And he wanted the Freaky Franks worm. 
over the minnow. It's just a little two and a half inch freaky burn. There it is. Better one. He come up off that tree finally, and what they do, like he was nosed up on that tree like this, when they see that bait above them and they're gonna, they see it, they go, and they come up to the bait just like that. They nose up underneath it. And as soon as you see them start to tilt, you know they're seeing your bait, so you wanna make sure you hold it super still. Cause you start moving that bait, they're gonna get out of there. They're gonna take off. 